Hi everyone, Justin here, and welcome back to another YouTube video. Recently, for the sake of childhood nostalgia, I just binged the entire Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra series. And growing up, Avatar The Last Airbender was by far one of my favorite TV shows to watch. And naturally, of course, it gave me an idea for a video. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a what bender are you quiz to find out which nation we would be a part of, and then of course, create a makeup look based on that. So if you're interested, stay tuned. I am beyond excited for today's video because this is kind of like a healing moment for me. For as long as I could remember growing up as a kid, I didn't really have a large group of friends and of those friends, they were always girls. So of course, growing up as a closeted gay boy, you were gonna be teased for only hanging out with the girls. But you know what? The other friends that I have were anime, TV shows, and of course, manga. Is that a little depressing? Looking back on it, maybe a little bit, but at least I had an after-school routine of going back to my room, eating ramen noodles, and watching anime. But enough of trauma dumping, let's get into the quiz. To be completely honest, I was not looking for a quiz that was gonna ask me 50 million questions and really get down to the nitty-gritty of what type of vendor I would be, because let's be real, we don't have time for that. Instead, we're gonna be taking a quick BuzzFeed quiz and say what you want about BuzzFeed, but don't act like you didn't take that What Disney Princess Are You quiz 8 million times just so you could get Mulan. But here we go, the what type of bender are you from Avatar The Last Airbender? Everyone knows their Hogwarts house, but what kind of bender would you be in the world of Avatar The Last Airbender? Earth, wind, fire, or air, everyone has an element that matches their personality and their bending abilities. You could be an airbender like Aang, a waterbender like Katara, a firebender like Zaddy Zuko, or an airbender like Toph, legend. All you have to do to find out yours is answer these six questions. There's no right or wrong answer, so be honest and don't forget to share your results in the comments. They're not fooling anyone. Each answer, I'm assuming, is gonna correspond to one of the different bending types, so... I knew that would be the case, and like I said earlier, I'm not looking for an extensive quiz. I'm just looking for something really quick and easy to give us what type of bender we are. With that being said, I'm still gonna move forward with this being super, super honest, and I'm not gonna try to just pick a certain one that I want. But when I did talk to my friends and family about this video concept, they said, why are you gonna take the quiz? You're just gonna get firebender because you're hot-headed. The woman was too stunned to speak. Enough of my jaw flapping, let's get into these questions. Number one, pick a place. Kyoshi Island, Air Nomad Temple, Ba Sing Se, and the Spirit World. Okay, so this one is kind of throwing me off because right off the bat, which one would be the firebender option even if I wanted to choose that? But I'm gonna go with my gut and seeing that I am from Hawaii, I'm gonna choose Kyoshi Island. Island girl. Moving on to our second question, favorite Avatar of the Last Airbender quote. That's rough, buddy. My cabbages! There's no war in Ba Sing Se. I don't need any calming tea. My gut is just telling me my cabbages because that's literally the most iconic quote in the entire series. So we're just gonna go with my cabbages. For this next question, we get to choose a creature, a lion turtle, flying bison, wing lemur, or elephant koi. I did not take a look at this quiz before doing this video. And actually I'm gonna amend what I said earlier. These choices are not super, super obvious because for this question, two of these creatures are from the air nation. So Buzzfeed, you got me. I'm gonna go ahead and choose lion turtle because it helped Aang energy bend and save the world from a hundred years of terrible war. Your fave could never. This next question is actually pretty fun. Pick a past avatar. We have Kyoshi, Roku, Kurok, and Yang Chen. We honestly don't know too much about Kurok except for the fact that he was kind of like doing his own thing when he was an avatar. I'm gonna scratch him from the list. Then we have Kyoshi, Roku, and Yang Chen. And if we're going purely based off of the TV show, I think we're also gonna have to eliminate Yang Chen. She does have a little story arc in the comic books, but in the television show, she doesn't appear too much. So we're gonna have to take her out. We're down to Kyoshi and Roku, and I'm already gonna choose who I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna choose Zaddy Roku. Of all the questions we've answered so far, this one is pretty obvious as to which answer corresponds to which bending, and I know Roku's already gonna be Firebender, but it is what it is. This question is asking us, choose an item, Sokka's boomerang, Iroh's jasmine tea, Aang's staff, or Katara's necklace. And I think I'm gonna go with Sokka's boomerang because even though Sokka is a goofy character, that boomerang got them out of some sticky situations on a couple occasions. We made it to the final question, and this one's actually pretty funny. It says, finally choose an Uncle Iroh, and it has Uncle Iroh at various stages in different parts of the series. The first one is so wholesome, it's just him drinking some tea. The second one, we have an aggressive Uncle Iroh breathing fire. The third one is him playing with some cards, and the last one is him smiling, holding up a pie show tile. Personally, I like him smiling, holding the tile, or him breathing fire. I think I'm gonna go with him holding up the pie show tile. <laughs> Can we get a drum roll, please? Our results indicate that we are an earthbender. <laughs> That one was pretty unexpected. I really thought I was gonna get airbender or firebender, not water or earth, but here we are. Alas, we are an earthbender. It also has a little bit of a description. It says, earthbender, you are patient and sturdy like earth beneath your feet. In the world of Avatar, you would be gifted with earthbending abilities. 
And you know what? I'll take it. Earthbending is pretty cool. We get some prodigies like Toph, so I'm not gonna complain. But now that we know which bender we are, I think we can change this white top into something a little bit more fitting. Much better. It's nothing too fancy, just a bit more on theme, and I wanted to wear a tank top to show my muscles because earthbenders are so strong. But enough of the cringe, let's get into this makeup look. We are back, the base is on, and this earthbender is ready to get glam. Earthbenders are rugged, but I want to keep it glam and fun. We're gonna do like a green smoky eye with some shimmer on the lid, something cute. It's super interesting I got earthbender because I really don't think I'm an earthbender, but of course we're gonna listen to the quiz. However, if I really think about it, earthbenders are my type of man. Before we place any shadow down, of course, we do need to prime. Just because we're a new Earth Kingdom citizen doesn't mean we're not gonna prime, so prime those eyes. Okay, but do you guys remember that episode in the second season of HLA when Katara and Toph are embossing Say and they get glam? While I was doing my base and thinking about my results from the quiz, I kind of half considered that would be a cute idea to recreate the look that Toph had on just because she was bullied for it and I think we could glam it up a bit more. But I ultimately had to pass because I really wanted to stay on theme about like the colors and everything and she just wasn't wearing green eyeshadow. We're primed and ready, so let's dive into this eyeshadow and we're gonna be using the Pot 2 palette from Michaela's Glam Light collaboration. And I don't wanna hear it, I do not have that accent, I cannot say Pot 2 for the life of me. I'm gonna start with the pretty sizable fluffy brush. And I'm gonna take the shade Bro and just run that all over my lid just to give myself a nice wash of green as a base. One of my favorite quotes about our favorite earthbender Toph isn't even from Toph herself. I believe it was in the episode when they're watching the play about their life and it's the actor who plays Toph like that big muscular dude and he says, my name is Toph because it sounds like tough. I love little interjections like that into the series because I feel like that was the actual thought process when naming the character. The green is building nicely. I'm concentrating it on the lid and making sure not to take it out too far or too high because we need to give ourselves some room to blend. Now I'm gonna take a much smaller brush, but this one is still pretty dense. I'm placing the shade Cody James on the outer corner of my eye and I'm really concentrating it and packing instead of buffing. My goal with this placement is twofold. So first of all, I wanna be able to build the vibrancy of the green on my eye, but second of all, I want to create dimension so it's not just flat one shade of green across my entire eye. And that one simple step changes the eye from this to this. With whatever excess I have on the brush, I'm gonna slowly with light pressure kind of just bring that towards the front of my eye. And as you can see, we haven't really started to blend yet. We're just building the color here before we take it outward in any direction. This is not looking bad by any means, but I think we can push that dimension a little bit better. You guys see this outer boundary of the green eyeshadow where it stops? We're gonna place the shade The Commons even tighter to my eye and then blend up to that line. My strategy behind this is that had we taken the shade The Commons first and placed it where we placed the other color, I think it would have come out a little too far. And by packing that shade Cody James first, you give yourself that wiggle room to make that decision whether or not you want to add or omit the next darker color. And this is what it should look like. Admittedly, it's a very, very minor change, but I think it makes a world of difference. Now I'm going back in with our very first shade Bro with a smaller fluffy brush, and I'm taking that on the perimeter of our green shadow. Be very patient with this and use small circular motions and slightly begin to bring that blend outwards. I have smaller eyes, which are also kind of hooded, so I like to take my time with the blend to ensure that this will be seamless and not very patchy. Despite not totally agreeing with my results, Toph is definitely one of my favorite characters and I think a lot of people would say the same. What the fuck is up, Kyle? No, what did you say, dude? What the fuck, dude? Step the fuck up, Kyle! Aside from Toph, I also like Sparky Sparky Boom Man. If you know, you know. And the villain in me just loves Azula. I think she was the perfect threat for Team Avatar and she was holding it down for real. I also think us gays are just drawn to powerful villains who are women. Love you, Azula. I'm using a bigger fluffy brush in the shade 13, and this is the part where we're actually gonna start bringing that shape a lot farther out. And compared to earlier, you can be a bit broader with your blending motions because you are taking it a lot farther out. My tip though is that as you're nearing the area where you want your eyeshadow to actually stop, bring your hand farther up the brush and use a lot lighter pressure to get a better blend. And that's actually what's gonna give you that nice tapered eyeshadow look and give you a nice transition from the dark to the light. It's also a good time to stop and check to bring your mirror farther away and see if you have a good dimension created in your eye. I'm noticing that I can bring the darker green a little bit farther out, but just make sure to keep the blend as well. For this step, I'm only gonna use the smaller brush to pack the color on. Then we're gonna go back to the brush that we used to blend out that shade 13. I don't dip back into that shade 13. I'm just gonna use whatever excess I have on the brush to blend out where we place that dark green. Now that is looking stunning. This green is 
gorgeous. I want to sharpen this line up a bit, so I'm going to take a flat concealer brush and some concealer. I forgot to mention it, but I'm sure you've noticed I'm not wearing any blush. I took inspiration from the latte makeup trend where the bronzer is really the focal point, and I thought because the Earth Kingdom has that earthy tone, I really wanted to make the bronzer come through. But once you sharpen up that edge with concealer, just blend it out with the sponge, and then we're going to quickly powder it. I love it, I love it, I love it. The eye is super sharp and defined. My philosophy is if you're doing something big and bold on the top, you kind of have to add something to the lower lash line to match it. And it's all in the name of creating balance. Which is funny because that's the Avatar's job, to bring balance to the world. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he cashed. A hundred years passed, my brother and I discovered a new Avatar, and Aaron learned Aang. And although he has a lot to learn, I believe Aang can save the world. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Anyway, I'm taking the shade Cody James with that dense brush that we used earlier and I'm really just concentrating it in the center and then buffing the edges. You want to be a little careful when blending that inner and outer corner because you don't want to disrupt that sharp line that you created. And don't worry, we're not neglecting the lid. We're going to get into that now and this NYX glitter glue is going to be your best friend. I absolutely adore this product, not only because it's super affordable and accessible, because it works really well. Whether you're adding a glitter or a shimmer, which is what we're going to do today, to your lid, it really helps it pop because all of those particles are gonna stick to your lid instead of falling out. I'm just taking a little bit on the back of my hand and you don't need too too much, a little does really go a long way. To apply the glitter glue, I'm gonna be taking a brush like this which is flat but still kind of fluffy. This is a personal preference but I love that little bit of fluffiness because it helps give us some movement when gliding that glue onto our lid. And once you have that product loaded on your brush, I'm just gonna gently apply that to our lid. A good way I like to think about it when actually applying is where would you place your concealer if you were cutting your crease? And that logic really does apply because when you you actually go in to apply the shimmer, you want it to be high enough so you can see the shimmer when you look straight on ahead. As you can see, I'm not having any issues applying this shimmer onto the lid because that glitter glue is like clinging onto it for dear life. And if you've ever felt like when you apply a shimmer, it's not giving you the same impact that it does have in the pan, maybe it's worthwhile trying a glitter glue. It's a small, annoying step to add to your eye routine, but I promise it'll save you the headache. Can we all agree that that is just stunning? My rule though is that if you think you have enough shimmer, add some more. I want to help that inner corner of my eye catch some light a bit more, so I'm just going to take my pinky, honestly, with that shade poppin' and plop that right in the inner corner. It has this really beautiful cool tone shift that matches that green eyeshadow really nicely. I have a little bit excess of that shade poppin' on my pinky, so instead of just wiping it off, I'm just going to place that on my lid really close to my upper lash line just to help give you that extra shimmer. Just trust me, these tiny little additions that you make to your makeup routine is what's going to amplify it that much more. And Rather than a white or a cream in the waterline, I'm gonna do something a little bit more exciting with this duochrome liner from Kaleidos. I don't know if Earthbenders are supposed to glow this hard, but I don't care because it looks gorgeous. This eye look is pretty much complete, so I'm just gonna add some liner and lashes and I'll be right back. I'm back and the eyes are done, but this look would be incomplete without a lip. I'm gonna start by lining my lips, and this is in the shade Cork from MAC. Clearly the eyes are the focal point with that really bold green, however I wanted brown to be an accessory color, which is why I omitted blush and really focused on the bronzer. But I want to push that brown a little bit more, which is why we're doing it on the lips, and this is a Juvia's Place lipstick in the shade Nile. And it's just a gorgeous deep brown lipstick, I highly recommend it if you like deeper browns. And this is our final Earthbender inspired makeup look. I had so much fun taking the Witch Bender RU quiz, and I honestly really thought I was gonna get Fire Bender, but based on my choices, I guess I'm an Earthbender. If you guys want to take the quiz, I'm gonna have it linked below, and please comment Comment what you guys get as your results, I would love to know. I think we successfully killed this look and we would be the most glam, fabulous Earth Kingdom citizen. Now where's my Haru because we all know he had a little bit of flavor in him. <laughs> but you guys know the drill, let me know what you guys thought of today's look in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe because you don't want to miss out on any videos that I'm going to be posting to this channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one, bye everyone!